Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, what we did in the last class. Last class, it's um, learning how to use our calculator to analyze poly polynomial functions. So go ahead and show that screen. Go ahead and talk about what we're gonna do. So um, we'll do a little bit of a review first, just to make sure we got a handle on it. So if you think about it, right here, we have a polynomial function. It is of degree three. It has a leading coefficient of one. The possible number of roots or solutions or zeros, however you want to call them, is the same as the degree, which is three. The max number of turns is three minus one or two. Um, what else? Oh, y intercept. There's nothing there, no constant term there. So we're going to say our y intercept is zero. And then we'll talk about our end behavior. So we're going to talk about our left and our right end, left and right end behavior. And if you think about it, what we're talking about is an odd function with a positive leading coefficient. So kind of think of your positive slope line. So that tells me the left is going to be negative infinity, the, pop, the right is going to be positive infinity. So it's a really quick kind of summary of what we talked about the first two classes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of use the calculator to kind of confirm that because really, if you think about it, I'm answering a lot of these questions. What I'm saying is, is that as we go to the right on this, my f of x or my y gets to be positive. As I go to the left on this, my f of x gets to negative. Um, the degree is three, so that tells me it's two turns. Um, this one right here is the possible number of roots is we'll find out how many times it crosses. In this case, we're going to find out that it does cross three times. We'll come back to that in a minute. We have a Y intercept at zero, zero. So what I want to show you is like, we've already kind of done this without even seeing the picture of it. So now what I want to do is show you how to do this in the calculator. So what I'm going to talk to you about is the following. First thing you want to do anytime you get one of the calculators is you want to do the, hit the following buttons. So I can see everything. Okay, so we are gonna hit the following buttons. We're gonna hit the blue second button. We're gonna hit the plus sign. We're gonna hit the seven, the one, and then the two. So second, plus, seven, one, two. And that clears the calculator. So now what we can actually do is we can put information into the calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this guy into the calculator. And the way that I do that is I hit this Y equals button right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in the function. And the way you type in the function is as follows. It is x cubed minus 9x, x cubed minus 9x. So there's my x button right here. So I'm going to hit x. This little caret button, this little up pointing kind of arrow thing that makes exponents. I hit the up. I put a 3 there. What I've now done is I've now made that x cubed. So now what's going to happen is that really didn't help at all, did it? I'm going to try over again. Really doesn't help. Um, let's see if we can get it closer. So x cubed. And what I want to show you is if you notice, we have a little arrow there that says we're up in the exponents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the little right arrow here, get out of the exponent, and I'm going to do minus 9x. So now what I've done is the following. Now we'll sort of take a look at it. I have now entered this equation into the calculator. And what I want to do is I want to show you what happens when I graph it. So I'm going to graph it. When we graph it, we notice we end up going on our left side. So um, as we look over here, as we're going to the left on the x-axis, this guy is going down to negative infinity. As we go to the right on the x-axis, this guy is going up to positive infinity. This guy has one turn, two turns. This guy crosses the x-axis one, two, three times. This guy has a y-intercept of zero, zero. So now what I'm going to show you how to do is how to get some of these answers out of the table. So what I want to do is I want to get the table. And if you kind of take a look at this calculator, the word table appears right here in blue. So what I'm going to do is hit that second button, hit the table button, the graph button, and it's going to bring me to a table. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look and see my x values. If I notice, I got negative four here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow up till I find negative four. And that tells me when x is negative four, 
y is negative 28, f of x is negative 28. When x is negative 3, y is 0. When x is negative 2, y is 10. When x is negative 1, y is 8. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is negative 8. When it's 2, it's negative 10. When it's 3, it's 0. And when it's 4, it's 28. So now what I've actually done is I'm getting information on the function using my calculator. So what I want to talk to you about is these guys right here. These ones right here have names. This one, this one, and this one all have names. They are called the x-intercepts. Is where it crosses the x-axis. So in other words, this graph crosses the x-axis here. One, two, three, it crosses it here. One, two, three, it crosses it here. Um, X-intercepts are also called the roots. They're also called the zeros. They're also called the solutions. They're all kind of synonyms for one another. So in this case, the zeros are what I just said, negative three comma zero, zero comma zero, three comma zero. So now um, what I wanna show you is actually there's a way to get it. So like the easiest way to get this, the zeros is to look for wherever there's a Y in the table. And that's going to tell me my zeros. But I want to show you another way that you can actually do it. I'm going to go back to the graph. And let's say I wanted to figure out what that value is right there. If I hit the second button and I hit the trace button, I have these calculations the calculator can do. It can tell me the zero. It can tell me minimum. It can tell me maximum. So what I'm going to do is number two, which is zero. What I want you to do is I want you to see down here how it says left bound. So I want to try and figure out that spot right there. So I'm going to try and get that blinking X somewhere to the left of that curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hit left until you get that X somewhere to the left of it. Now I know it seems below it, but if you think about it, this guy's going down. So he is kind of moving to the left. I hit enter. Now it says right bound. So what I'm going to do is arrow, uh, arrow to the right until I'm above it. Arrow to the right until I'm above it. Hit enter. We're always going to enter through guess. And what's going to happen is that's going to tell me the answer is three zero. Well, we had that, but if it's not in the table, that's how I find this. So that's how you find zeros using the calculator. Um, the next thing I'm going to ask you for is relative max and min. So if you want to think about a maximum, a maximum kind of looks like this, like the top of a hill. A minimum looks like this, kind of the bottom of a hill. So if we look at this curve right here, which kind of looks like this, um, I want to find out those points at the top and the bottom. I'm going to tell you your calculator does that as well. The way you do it is that same second and trace. Let's go ahead and start by finding our, um, our minimum. So our minimum is going to be this, guy, this point down here at the bottom. So again, it says to the left. Notice that X is not to the left of that spot. What I need to do is I need to move it until it clearly seats to the left of it. I hit enter. Now it says to the right of it, right bound at the bottom. What I'm saying is right there, it says right bound. I move it to the right of it. I hit enter. I enter through guess, and it tells me that my max, my minimum is at 1.73 comma negative 10.39. So what that tells me is my minimum here is at um, negative, I'm sorry, 1.7 positive 1.7 comma negative 10.39. So that's my, where my minimum is. I can do the same thing with my maximum. Second trace, I go to number four maximum. I want to figure out that spot right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow my curve, my little, see that little X moving? I'm going left until I get him to the left of that high point. He's to the left of the high point now, enter. I now go to the right to get him to the right of that endpoint. enter. And it really doesn't matter as long as you're to the left and to the right. And we always enter through guess. In this case, it says negative 1.73, 10.39 negative 1.73, positive 10.39. Now, let me say right now, I know it looks like it's just the same, this this right here, 1.73, is the same number just with the sign switched. Um, it just so happens that that's what it's doing in this problem. It's not always the case. So you can't just say, oh, well, the, the maximum is here with you know negative and a positive, so I just flip the signs. That's not always the case. It just so happens in this problem, it does. So um, that's using your calculator. So what I would recommend you do is get comfortable using your calculator. We had six examples that we worked on in class. 
that kind of did that. Again, my recommendation is just practice. Practice gets better at this because it will be a skill that you can use moving forward. 